Okay, so this is mom's video. And like I said, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions and you just say whatever comes in your into your conscious mind. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start off by when you were basically a teenager or younger and ask you a bunch of questions about your home life. So obviously the first question is, when and where were you born? I was born in Parramatta, Australia, uh, August the 1st, 1929. Okay. When and where was your mother born? God, I can't remember the date now, but she was born in Scotland. I know that, and, but I can't remember the date. Okay. And last time I knew she grew up in a place called Hamilton, is that where she That's was right. born to? That's right, Hamilton. Okay. When and where was your father born? I think it was Linford in Essex. Okay. And do you have any idea when that was? He was born in September, I think, 1900. Okay. Where did you go to primary school? At Chadwell St. Mary in Essex. All right. What are some of your memories from primary school? I know I liked it there, but it was a long walk. My brother and I used to have to walk there in rain and snow uh, up a steep hill, and it probably was a mile and a half each way. All right. Do you remember any of your teachers or classmates from primary school? Mr. Harvey. And what did he teach? He taught math, and he was the one that kind of made it enjoyable, school enjoyable. I loved it there. Okay. Do you remember any other childhood friends or any childhood friends from primary school or neighborhood kids or kids near your farm? Because no. I believe when you went to primary school, where did you live then? At the farm. And, and when did you come back from Australia to England? Nine. Well, how old were you? I was about four. Okay. So you, at four you came back to England and then lived on a farm, and where was the farm? It was in Biggin, but actually I went to another place prior to that. Grandma and Grandfather had rented a house for it, fully furnished it for us, and we went there and we stayed there for about a year. Okay. Do you remember any friends or neighborhood kids from when you were young? Well, all, the main thing I can remember, it was a beautiful new house but I remember picking up a sack that was in the garden and it was full of earwigs and the earwigs pinched all my fingers and I remember screaming and I've hated earwigs ever since. There you go. So anyway, do you remember any kids, say, from when you were under 10 years old? Anyone you played with? Anybody you went to primary school with? Uh, well, at Chadwell, when we went to Chadwell, cause that was a year after we got back from Australia, I was told I could choose to sit next to anybody I liked in the classroom and I picked this curly haired girl and it was Dorothy Price was her name and we were friends until she died about three years ago. Okay. What are some memories you have of your brother when you were little, say under 10 years old? Uh, well we played together a lot and I can remember he was always I mean, I loved him dearly, but he did spiteful things to me often. And we hit tops, and inevitably it seemed that the top hit me. But, uh, but we were great companions. Okay. Do you have any childhood holiday memories of any of the holidays? Very distinct memory, because we were on vacation at Littlehampton in England when war broke out. And I can remember sitting around the dining room table in the house that we had rented rooms in and people were crying because of the war and as soon as the war was announced the sirens went and we all got under the table. Okay. Do you have any holiday memories? Well that was a beach memory. At that time... Uh, when I guess when I mean holiday I mean like Easter and Christmas and oh. any other... Oh yes. Cultural holidays. I can remember an Easter where we always, we never had very much money, John and I, because it was considered not good unless we saved it. But on an Easter, John and I cycled to a friend who let us pick all the daffodils we could. 
and wanted to, to take to my mother for Easter, and we did that. Okay. Um, so, basically, why did you go to Australia? Because your parents, obviously, are from Britain. Your your mom was born in Scotland. Where was, what country was your dad born in? England. And so why did they move to Australia? Dad always wanted to go back. They loved it there. Unfortunately, two weeks before we were due to sail, my brother was called up into the Air Force and he couldn't come back with us. They wouldn't let him leave the country. Now, wait a minute. I thought you came back to... I thought you left Australia when you were four or five. Yes. So I'm, I'm asking, when did your parents go to Australia? Because you originally, were born in Australia. Yeah. Originally. Oh, I I don't know. Probably two years, two or three years before I was born. And do you have any idea why they went there? Because my father just wanted to travel and get away from home. He, he worked on a ship for a while. Um, he, that's why he knew he he cooked so well, and I actually I still have the the book that he had of the different menus that they used to cook. Okay, my and that mother, leads in perfect because my next question was: Do you did you have a favorite home cooked meal when you were young? Uh, yeah, probably uh, roast beef. Okay. And then why did you guys leave Australia then when you were five and come back to England? Oh, I guess it was during the, when it was a very poor, what do you call it, when, uh, like we're having recession. The depression. Depression. And uh, we came home to England, back to England. Grandma and grandfather had rented this house and furnished it down to every dish, every piece of furniture. It was beautiful. So you had to come back to England because of financial reasons? Because it was would be a better life for us and they wanted to see the, okay. uh, uh, Dad's children. All right. What's the most inspirational lesson your mother taught you when you were young? I don't know. Um, that's, that's hard to say. She was... Uh, I don't know. Nana always was joking and she she got on well with everybody. She was very forgiving and kind. Okay. And what was the most inspirational lesson or thing you remember the most about your dad when you were young? Well, because he'd been brought up that you never gave in to anything. You, you overcame all your obstacles and life wasn't easy. Okay. Um, what are some of your childhood traditions or cultural things you passed on to your own kids? Besides uh, sausage rolls. <laughs> um, well, I tried uh, to pass on, you've got to be careful with your money and save your money. Uh, I don't know. I tried. And I'm thinking more traditions, you know, like things that you do at the holidays or oh, yes, things that you do like, every afternoon uh, or something tea, like that. They, they were brought up to have tea in the morning and uh, we ha traditional English, they love sausage rolls and the, uh, Christmas, the things that we did at Christmas. Uh, and tr I think traveling too because I think that Europeans tended to travel more then but maybe not so much now. Okay. Was there anything else you'd like to share about your life or your friends or anything you can comes to mind before you were a teenager? Yes, was how different it was then. Nobody drank. No teenagers drank. This is before you were a teenager. Oh, before. Okay. Well. So we're talking like you know mainly primary school type memories. Oh, too, well, which is only a long the fact ago. that my father was very protective. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere hardly after school. I had to come home and I wasn't allowed the freedom that most other children had because we were isolated on a farmland and there were only like six little houses near us. Okay. But and do you have any other memories of, of living on that farm you could share? I was terrified of the geese Okay. and my mother used to have to walk up the lane uh, and meet me because the geese wouldn't let me come down the lane to go to the house. All right. Any other memories of the way that the house functioned or day-to-day yes. -day activities you'd do? 
I'm still appreciative of everything that I have now because it had no central heating. I'd come home from school and have to light a coal fire to get any heat in the house. It had no electricity. I had to light the lamps and it was cold. <laughs> okay. Anything positive you can think about besides geese and that kind of stuff? I love the fields and the trees. That, and my brother and I played for ages enjoying what was around us. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to talk about kind of when you were a teenager. So the first question, of course, is where did you go to secondary school? Palmas, it was a school for girls that I had to uh, take a test for to go. And out of my prime, my first school, until you were like 10, 11, uh, three, only three of us passed to go there, and one was my friend Dorothy Price. Okay. And what are some of your memories from secondary school, from this school? I was very happy there. I played nearly every sport they had and played tennis and hockey. I never did learn to swim, and I still don't know how to swim, and I wished I had. Okay. And did you have a favorite subject at school? Did you like learning? Yes, I liked school. Uh, the one thing that stands out in my mind, that one time I went to a movie instead of doing my homework, copied somebody's homework quickly in the morning and read it to Miss Davis, it was geography, and she called me the next day because it was identical to a friend's, and yeah. I'd obviously copied the friend's. Yeah, that'll happen. So I thought that your farm was in Grays, but you said it was... what. Where did you say it was? It's called Biggin House, and it was Biggin was this little area with about twelve houses in it. So it's near Grays. Probably about far four miles from Grays, near Tilbury, okay. between Tilbury and Grays. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you have a favorite teacher at your secondary school, or a favorite subject to study? Um, you said when you were little, you had a good math teacher. Any other Mr. teachers? Mr. Harvey. You I probably liked uh, geography, and it was Miss Davis. Okay. And can you think of any memories, uh, say, with Do was it, it's Dorothy, right? Dorothy. Mm -hmm. With Dorothy or any other friends when you were a young teenager? We used to play tennis in the summer. Uh, we'd come home and we had to cycle everywhere we went. And it probably was three miles and we'd play tennis during the week nearly every day. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the kinds of questions I'm thinking of until you were in secondary school. Um, anything else you can think of you want to talk about from up through your secondary school education? Oh, when I went to the school when I was 11, it was in, they had just, it was the war and it was dark, everywhere was dark because the Germans had dropped bombs onto the oil tank, tanks. And it, it, was, it was terrible. We had to go right into the shelter. We couldn't go in the classroom. And we sat on benches in there. We had a bucket behind a curtain that we could use for a bathroom. And it was, everywhere was black with the smoke because of the oil burning. It was like night time. That was my first day of school. Okay. And then did you live at the school or did you go home every night? I went home every night. All right. And so, and where did Dorothy live? Did she live on another farm somewhere? No, Dorothy lived in, it was public housing that they had for, for people. She had like six brothers and sisters. So public housing here is low income housing? Yes. Okay. So then it doesn't sound like you weren't a rich kid when you were young. Well, we were, we were better off than most people, yes. Okay. We were. Mm -hmm. And then what did your dad do for a living? He had a butcher shop and he was a butcher. Okay. And so the, the next couple of questions I'm going to ask you is about the war. So do you remember how old were you when the war started? Ten, I think. All right, and then how old, what, what and then so I will just say that it started when you were ten. And what are your first memories of the start of the war? The air raid, as they announced the war. And also a plane coming down in a field there we lived. My brother and I used to, we were put in the air raid shelter at night on the farm. My mother and father didn't come in there and it, I didn't, we didn't like that at all. It was very small and in the night we would get up and try to find the shrapnel that fell from the anti-aircraft uh, 
stuff. And okay. It, and we hardly slept because of the noise. And then when the doodle bugs came over, we could hear that. We never slept all that night. And you saw these little planes that would go along and then suddenly stop and fall to the ground. So what was your day-to-day -day life like during the war? It was kind of scary. We lived... My father was so concerned, he took us to the chalk pits and we slept in the chalk pits at night, in where they burrowed into the chalk and had ledges like a couch and we put mattresses on and slept in them in, in the chalk. So where you were located was between where the German, the German army came in London, so you were kind of between those two spots, but you weren't the place they were actually trying to destroy. No, but they followed, they were close because they followed the Thames, which was right there. Okay. And that's how they, that was their light to go up to London. Okay. And how would you say the war changed your life? Well, at that time, a lot. I mean, uh, the Americans came over and changed a lot where we lived. And uh, it was, a lot of it was scary. I was in a movie theater when the bomb dropped outside. And I can make cracked the wall down one side, but I was with Dorothy, but we just stayed and watched the end of the movie and came out and walked through all this broken glass to get the bus to come home. Okay. Anything else you can think of about the war? I was always afraid of walking home because it was probably three quarters of a mile from the bus stop to our house and just fields and a not even a paved road and no lights and I would walk home and I was always afraid of the Germans being hiding around there. Okay. So did you finish your secondary education? Yes. And then how old were you when you finished your secondary school? Uh, well we at that time what was I think we finished at 16. So then your secondary school is like our middle school and high school put together then because you were there for it sounds like five years. Right. From 11 to 16? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did you have any more education past that? I went to London to a St. Godric's School for Young Ladies. And uh, but it was in like a mansion, but I was very homesick and unhappy, and my parents brought me home. And what was, what was the function of that education or that school? Uh, it was mostly uh, office, working in an office, which when it's entirely different in England because people only went to universities if they wanted to be maybe teachers or something but uh, and I didn't desire that and I wanted to work in London and, and I started off working for a bank so it's a vocational type school yes okay all right so is there anything else you can think of that you want to share with us before you left home so I don't know when you, how old you were in left oh. home, but anything before that time? Any memories, any friends, any stories before you left home? Uh, it, I can remember my brother left home when he was 15 and I was devastated. And, and who's older, you or him? I was. He, and left, he climbed out the... And how, old, how, many, how much older were you? A year. Okay. He climbed out of the, the bedroom window upstairs and... Uh, he left and went to work in London. I had got a good job in London for travel uh, to sell clothes to beat the stores, Harrods and things. And why did he leave so young? He didn't get on very well with my father. So your dad was pretty strict? Very strict. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then the next thing we're going to talk about is your life from when you just left home until you got married to Johnny. Mm -hmm. So, do you remember what age you were when you left home? When we came to us, I think I was 18. Okay. I'm not sure. So, at 18, and then where did you go when you left home? Well, we went on... I'd never left... But that's when we were going to Australia. Okay, so who's we? My mother and father and myself. John okay. didn't come. So, John stayed in London working, mm -hmm. and you were about 18, and you and your mom and dad went back to Australia. Uh -huh. On the Orcades. And did you go there to live, or just for a holiday? To live. So you're going to move back to Australia. Yes. And why did your parents want to go to Australia again? Because they loved it there. Okay. And then how long did you stay in Australia? 
Well, only until Johnny went back on the ship, he got another ship and came back to us. So I would imagine it's three or four months. Okay, and, and is that where you met Johnny on the ship? Going out on the Orcades. So the first time going there, you met him? Yes. Okay. And, and then, oh. Go ahead. Uh, I remember meeting him, and after knowing him for like two weeks, we became engaged. I was going to tell my father, who, I suppose I should say this, was an alcoholic, and he'd been put in uh, care there, and I was going to tell my father that next morning about Johnny and I, and he died in the hospital. On the boat? On the boat. And we, the next day, we, somebody came and said, you know, there's a burial up, up top, on the top deck. And we thought, that's funny. So we inquired, and it was my father. And they had not told us they were going to bury him. And I remember they, it was, it was, it was bad. They were playing hymns, and they, he was in a box with a, with a flag over it. And I thought the box would go in the water, but they slid him out of the box into the ocean. Okay. And then, um, what are some of your memories then of your non-family experiences when you were a young adult? So you said Johnny came back to Australia a couple of months later, and then you get married there? Or? No, he he. We were going back to England with him because we wanted to go back. So who's we? You and My your mom. My mother and I. So you and your mom decided after your dad passed away to go back to England. Yes. So you moved back to England, and then where did you go? We stayed at a lady's house. We rented a room, Miss Vosper in in Grays, who was a single, older lady, but was very kind to us. Okay, and then when did you get married to Johnny? How old were you? I think I was 20. 20? Mm -hmm. So you dated him or were engaged to him for a couple of years? Yes. All right. So while during those years of you being engaged, where uh, you, you continued to live with your mom? Yes. And do you remember any friends during that stage of your life? Some of the friends that went I went to school with, Audrey Houchin and... Uh, and because Dorothy, uh, mostly, mostly them. I worked. I must have worked, at, yes, because I used to get the train to London. To go to work, I had to walk three quarters of a mile to the bus, a 20 minute bus ride, a half a mile walk to the train station, 30, 50, 45 minutes a train ride, and then I worked up in London and I had to walk probably half a mile from it. It took ages to get to work. So do you remember anything you did, any experiences with your friends before you were married? We had Dorothy mostly because uh, they had a bigger family and I used to go to parties at their house and it was, it was always just uh, music, sing, singing music. Somebody always played the piano and we sang. Never, and never did anybody ever drink. Not even till I was sixteen, seventeen. There okay. was no drinking, and in my fat friends. Did you have any boyfriends before you married Johnny? Yes. Eddie, Eddie Brown was his name, which I met at this lady's house that used to look after us sometimes at night when the, my mother and father were working, and he was in the air force. And I wrote to him for two years, I think it was. He went to India, he was injured, and then he came back, but he wanted to get married, and I was much not ready for that. Okay. And so before you were married, what jobs did you have, if any? I worked for Pittman and Dean, which was associated with Lloyds in London, and so was that a bank or an investment company? It, it was. Um, it was to do with insuring uh, ships. Okay. Going different places. All right. And then before you were married to Johnny, did you have any other travel experiences besides going to Australia? The couple of times we've discussed. I thought you went to India at some point. If well, I that was on the way to Australia. We stopped to India. Oh, so f when you go to Australia from England. 
What did you do? Go through the Suez Canal? Yes, I remember getting well, I guess that makes sense because otherwise you have to go through the Panama Canal. So you went through the Suez Canal. And it was a time when there was a trouble with Egypt and we were told to be careful going ashore because it, they were kind of anti-English there. So when you went to England the second time, or sorry, to Australia the second time when you were in your teens, you went via the Suez Canal and that's when you went to India and anything else you remember I from that journey? I didn't go to the Suez Canal. So how did you get, how did you get from England to India then? We went that way, Bombay. We went to stay right. in Bombay. So, but you, to get over to that ocean, you didn't go around the tip of Aden. Africa. Aden. I remember getting off at Aden. Yeah, but if you're if you're in England and you try to go to India, you either have to go around the tip of Africa, or go through the Suez Canal. Well, we didn't. So how did you get to India? All I know is. Oh, maybe that is the Suez Canal. It is, in yeah. Egypt. Yeah. That's right, because okay. I remember them singing at night, all the natives and all the, the drums you could hear go, the Indians they were. Okay. And it was very interesting, the Suez Canal. Right, sorry. It's all right. It was no Suez that I went ashore. Okay, so soon I'm just going to ask you a few questions about your life with Johnny. Is there anything else you remember that you want to talk about before you were married? Nothing that particularly that I know I missed my brother when he left because we were always so close. Okay. All right, so you uh, met Johnny when you were about 18. You got married around 20. Mm -hmm. And then where did you and him live when you first got married? He had a house, a new, quite a new house that he bought before he knew me, and um, which was in Rumford. Okay. And, and what are some of your memories of living there? It was very nice. We had all new furniture, they had a lovely garden, and I remember all the blackberry bushes the other side of the garden. We used to pick blackberries and make blackberry jam. Okay. Did you have a job when you were married to Johnny in England? Yeah, that's when I worked with Pittman and Dean. Okay. And then when did you move to the United States? 1954, I think. Could it have been 54? Well, I was born in 58, so it's sometime before then, huh? Okay, 54. And is, did you move directly to Glendale at that time? Yes, we actually, why we did come here, there were two reasons. Once we rented a house to some uh, Americans, Mr. and Mrs. Wolf, and he owned a lot of property here, and he said, "You've got to go back. Got to go to America, but buy property when you do." And uh, so that's one of the reasons we came. Plus, Johnny's sister, who later became a famous singer in England, Joan Joan. She was was Joan Regan. Uh, she came back and lived with Johnny and I in the house. I looked after her children while she started singing. At night, I looked after them. And. Uh, then she, we came to the United States and she was supposed to follow us, but she never did. She was so successful, she stayed in England. Okay. And what did you do when you came to America, when you lived in Glendale? Did you get a job or were you a housewife? What did you do? I, I got a job at Forest Lawn in uh, Glendale. Okay. And do you want to share any memories of anything else with Johnny? either in the U.S. or in England that you'd like to share? Well, I can remember when he left that Forest Lawn was wonderful to me. They used to take me to see the doctor when I was expecting Johnny in their limousine. The okay. doctor, they were very good to me. All right, then you were separated from Johnny and I was born. Mm -hmm. And then before I was a year old, you met Ken. Mm -hmm. So, w when and where did that happen? Well, what happened, uh, I can remember, and I can honestly say, I never really wanted children, but I can remember so distinctly the Dr. Kevin, and it, you were gorgeous. And uh, it changed my whole outlook because my. Uh, anyway, what ha I didn't. I met your father. The day I got out of hospital. So that's Ken? Yes. Okay. Because when I filled the application in for insurance, he says, oh, it's your birthday in a week. You can't be by yourself. Let me take you out. Okay. All right. And then I, what Dad said when I did this with him, 
who's Ken, mm -hmm. is that when you married him, he moved into your house on Glen Oaks with you. And I think that's correct, right? Uh, yes. And so can you share any memories from that house on Glen Oaks? Oh, from Ken? From well, when you, Ken? E either, either one. Anything about something about the Glen Oaks house? Uh, well, I know that your father, like he's always liked to do things, and he turned the... I think he he did a lot of work in, in, on the den area. I don't know if he made the den or he did that, but uh, we were, it was very nice, but it was it was kind of small, and I, I wanted to move to another house, and I got one through a friend of Ken's, and it was, it was, it, the man, we didn't have the money because he didn't sell the house in time, but he let me wait until, I sold the house myself actually, in Glendale, and then we had the money to put down on the one in Chevy Chase. Oh, not Chevy Chase. On Dalval. Yeah. So we grew up on Dalval, 1610 Dalval. That's right. And can you share, because uh, the, we've got about a couple of minutes left so the one thing I do want to make sure we get on here mm -hmm. is do you have any favorite experiences of traveling when we were a family? Yes we used to always took other people with us it seemed other children uh, but we traveled a lot nothing luxurious and no hotels mostly tents and cars but we traveled a lot and and Nothing extravagant, but it was fun and wonderful for the children, I thought. And so where were some of the places you oh, can remember? we did go to Europe twice. I think it was twice. And we'd, we used to buy a car there, which was cheaper than here. And then when we got back, we would sell it. And we really got the use of it for nothing. And we'd always end up at my brother's home in England, which was like a small castle. Almost. It was beautiful. And we had a section of the house for us to use when we were there. Okay. Do you have any memories of the Dalval house you'd like to share? Uh, I loved it there. Uh, and you, had, you, you boys were very happy. It was a wonderful place to bring up children, I thought. And I, I liked it. Okay. So we're in, in the end of the tape and the end of my questions. So, is there anything else you can think that you want to share I'll probably that think, I haven't talked about? I'll probably think of a lot later, but I do know I had a, we had lots of parties there because I belonged to the DBE, and we used to have fashion shows there and parties, and, and it was fun. A lot of friends there. And uh, at the, Delval? Yeah, Delval. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any memories from Glen Oaks that are coming, coming, coming to you? Anything about that house when we were real little, little? Oh, I can remember one of you used to collect snakes. And twice they came to our house to, because they were snakes you'd found. Uh, it was, the deer used to come to the bottom of the garden. It was, it was lovely there. Good. Okay, and I, I just thought of one question. I think we can squeeze this in. Mm -hmm. When did your mom, who, I, who we called Nana, when did she move to America? She said if I let, stayed here for a year, she'd come out, and she did. Okay, so after you were here with Johnny, mm -hmm. she then moved here. And I remember um, when we were little, little, she didn't live with us at Dalval. She had, I think she had an apartment somewhere, and I think I remember her working at Webb's or something yes, like did. that. Yes, she did. She worked at Lewis. and She didn't really get on very well with Ken, which was one of the reasons. And then when I was young, um, she actually, though, we retrofitted the the house in the backyard, which I think was actually a greenhouse, and turned it into a little guest house, oh, and Nana right. lived there, didn't she? Yes, and she was very, very happy there. It was, it was lovely. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're down to the last minute, so you did good. Uh, well, I can you always you broke the record. <laughs> so, okay, anything else you want to share with us? No, but I think this is a wonderful idea, and I appreciate you doing it, and I hope everybody enjoys it when I'm gone. Okie dokie. All right, well, there's Eileen Flint in 34 minutes. Take care. Bye.